Here we go. Hello, everybody. Oh, I have to unmute. Okay, I see two people are signing on. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to Chalet's Garden Coach. Uh, we do this. Oh, I've got to turn my radio off. Excuse me, excuse me. And now that I do that, I should I, I should mute my phone. And so I've, I've muted my phone. And now we're ready. We're ready to go. So welcome, everybody. You're welcome. Let me see. I'm going to get all my systems up here. We've got 16 people already. Very good. Um, there we go. And then I'm going to get the, uh, the chats opened. <coughs> Very good. And then the questions and answers. Oh, that's not going to work. That's right in the middle. Hold on just a minute. All right. Hey, I think we're ready to go. So let me see. Okay, we've got 17 people. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Chalet's Garden Coach presentation. Uh, we're doing this every Tuesday afternoon um, from 1 to 2 p.m. And the format has been changing all along, you know, as, as we're doing this, but I think we've got a pretty good format. What, what I'm doing is I'm starting out and alerting you to what we're seeing in the plant um, information center. We, we, it's called the yeah, plant information center. And that's where the um, um, all questions are being directed so that we have three staff members there at all times so that we can answer your questions. And then because of the social distancing, oh, excuse me, I have a tickle. <coughs> because of the, the social distancing, you know, everyone keeps the distancing and we're keeping safe from this COVID. Now, I'm gonna change the subject and get it right, shift gears and get right into horticulture. And first of all, how many of you all, as the garden coach, how many of you all checked your rain gauges this morning after the rainfall that we had? Here's a question. Okay, cool. I'll get to that question in a minute. All right. I was so happy when I walked outside this morning, first of all, because it was 68 degrees. Oh my God. It was like heaven compared to this 95 degree stuff that we've, we've been living with. And, and, but what's even better is my rain gauge had an inch and a half of water in it. Oh my gosh. That is like the ultimate blessing. Uh, one of our my coworkers here uh, has a young son who is uh, doing a summer job of watering the neighbor's lawn uh, while they're away on vacation, and he, it's it's been killing him. It's been absolutely killing him. I think he's 11 years old, and it's been killing him. And so she was actually doing the rain dance yesterday, hoping that it would rain. So I didn't get a chance to talk to her this morning to see if she checked their rain gauge. To see if it was as, as, as much as, as mine. And I was watching the weather this morning. Excuse me. <coughs> Speaking of water, I'm going to just do this. Here we go. I've got a bottle of water. Um, I was watching the, the weather pattern this morning, and there was just a band that kind of went through the northern suburbs where, it, where they were getting up to an inch and a half. And I thought, oh, darn. I looked, I looked like I was south of the band on the map. And when they were talking about Schomburg and Elgin, I live in Evanston and I'm usually right along that line. And so I, but I thought, oh no, don't, don't, don't get too positive. Walked out inch and a half. Love it, love it, love it. I hope you all got the same. Okay, so um, now let's, let's keep moving on here. And what I, what I, what we're doing, what I do is I go over my notes of what I've been seeing. And usually I gear it on what I've talked to Tracy Butler uh, about. I work with her every Wednesday morning and we do a 10 minute segment based on what I'm seeing. And then I use those notes and expand it for the garden coach. And then I'll answer all the questions at the end. So it keeps, it keeps you hanging on here. And that's kind of mean, isn't it? But here we go. So um, the most wonderful thing that I want to mention besides the rain last night, and excuse me for a drink, was that wonderful break we had in the weather last weekend. Wasn't it lovely? I mean, it was the first time this summer where my husband and I actually enjoyed being out on the deck, 
Uh, we had three different meals out on our patio on, on, on Sunday and Monday, you know, at the beginning of this week. It was just lovely, absolutely lovely, especially after all the heat and all the humidity that we've been having. And not only was it a break for us, it was a huge break for all of our landscape plants, our lawns, especially our lawns. When I was looking at, um, I get a report um, every week um, from a, a service showing what the soil temperatures um, have been each day. And as of Friday, the soil temperatures were 80 five degrees. That's the soil. That is outrageously hot. And that's hot enough to actually kill the roots of the cool season turf grasses. So I've been getting a lot of people coming in with um, problems of their turf grass where the underneath layer is just yellowing out. And that's a sign of the root damage. So when we have this cool weekend and the temperatures at night were down in the 60s, that drops, when I looked at my soil temperature report, when I got back in Tuesday morning, the soil temperatures were down to 71 again, which is perfect growing conditions and recovery conditions for uh, you know our cool season turf grasses. So with the rain last night and, and then the cooler temperatures, our turf should be coming back. Now, this weekend, tomorrow is supposed to be just gruesome with the high humidity and the high temperature. I, I, heard, I heard warnings you know, of the fact that we could have 100 to, 10, 100 to 110 degree temperature humidity index tomorrow, tomorrow and, and, um, and, and, and Saturday. So be cautious out there in that high, high heat. Now, okay, so um, let's see, so, okay, so here we go, you know, watch your soil temperatures. I know I'm the only weirdo that goes out with a soil thermometer and tests the, the temperature at my house, but, but you gotta do that, you gotta know what's going on. Okay, so now what, what you can do also this time of year, keep planting those warm season plants like the salvias and the ornamental grasses and, and you know, the tropical plants, they love this high heat and this high humidity. So, you know, so it's wonderful to keep adding those to your gardens and or your patio. Um, if you're gonna do the tropicals in your own garden, you can actually sink the pots in the soil and then th that moderates the fluctuation of the soil temperature of those, those pots or those containers by putting them below grade and they don't get nearly as hot as they would be up on top of um, sitting on the patio. So consider doing that and, and creating a real tropical look in your garden. It's really fun to do that. Okay, now, um, all right, um, it, with, with perennials, this is the time to be looking at your garden and seeing where you have holes in color and where you need to add a little more color. And that's when you come to your favorite your favorite garden center, chalet, and see what's in flower now, and then put that in your garden. If you do that once a week, where you just come and you know, scope out your garden, see where you don't have color, come and find something that's in bloom here, and then sink that and put that in your garden, you're gonna help create a continuous bloom, a, color, a, a, a garden with continuous color. And that's the easiest way to do it, just see what's in bloom you know, in the garden center, put that in your garden and there's a good, good chance that that plant will be in bloom at the same time next year as it was this year, depending on, our, of course, the weather and the temperatures, you know, all, and all of that. Okay, so um, now I'm going to keep going down my list here. Um, I, 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 again, um, because it's going to be so hot, the number one thing is be, be conscious of watering, you know, water, water, water. You need to water your vegetables. You don't want the fluctuating um, water levels to help create um, blossom end rot on tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers. So we've been getting a lot of those problems at the plant information center windows. And, and that's because of the fluctuating levels of calcium uptake because of the water fluctuating. The plant doesn't have consistent levels of calcium. And so then you, it, it sets it up to have that, that rotten end of the, the fruit and it's called blossom and rot. And usually it's not unusual for, um, for, for that to happen with the first 
harvest, the first tomatoes that are produced, the first cucumbers that are produced, and the first peppers that are produced. Because the plant, I, I, like, to, I like to equate it to learning how to ride a bike and you're on training wheels and you're a little wobbly. And, and that's how plants are when they're, they, they make that first tomato. Invariably, you're gonna get some problem like that. But if you're using really good fertilizers like the Dr. Earth tomato, vegetable, and herb that is made from the fish waste industry. So it's got natural levels of high calcium. Uh, it's wonderful. And you know it will help really to alleviate that problem. Um, you wanna make sure you get, an, an, you know, that, you know, the, an, you know, besides the water, get another a, a dosage of fertilizer on all those. With the Dr. Earth brand, they last 60 days. So a May application, would would lend itself to the next application would have been the first of July. So if you haven't done a July app, go ahead and get that fertilizer out on your vegetables, your perennials, your roses, your hydrangeas. Give the hydrangeas that high phosphorus fertilizer, especially the paniculata types, because this is when they're producing all those flowers. They're using that fertilizer as the building blocks to build all those parts. It's not really food. Plant makes their own, the plants make their own food with, when they photosynthesize, they create their own carbohydrates. So it's the, the fertilizers are used for the building blocks to put those parts together. Make sure you're giving enough to, you know, to your plants. Um, there's, um, there's um, I've had so many people that are, they're really good gardeners, but all they're doing is adding organic matter and mulching with organic matter, mulch. On you know on on top of the soil around their plants, when the temperatures this high, the plants really need to have some extra fertilizer you know to because they're doing so much production. So don't you know don't 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 get chintzy on the fertilizer. Make sure you're really adding it a, a, a lot. So now um, okay again, I want to repeat what I always talk about in the garden plant sessions about the water basic you know watering principles are at 75 degrees or cooler, you should use, and you know, we should be getting an inch of rain a week. If we don't get it, then supplemental water. Every 10 degrees above 75, an additional half inch. So at the 85 degree temperatures, we should be getting an inch and a half. Ooh, I got that last night, yay. Uh, but then, and then at 95, another half inch, we should be getting two inches of water. That means running your sprinkler systems three times during the week. So that each time you you deliver a half inch of water, and you know so like Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, make sure you're really doing that to make sure your plants have enough you know enough enough water. Okay, so now let me take a break and look at some of these questions since they've come in. I have an old Forsythia hedge about seven feet high, five feet wide, and over ten feet long. This year, I had very few flowers. And they did branches, which I have removed. Should I cut it down to four feet now? Um, you can. You you can print it down to four feet now. That would be that would be fine. And that's an anonymous attendee. So I'm going to say anonymous. You may go ahead and print that down to four feet right now. And you should do it now. Um, the cutoff date for pruning anything that's a spring blooming plant technically is July 15th, because after July 15th they start producing their flower buds for next spring. And so anytime you prune a spring blooming plant after the 15th of July, you have the potential of pruning off flower buds. Now this year, I don't think you have to worry about that because it's been so hot and so dry. I don't think the plants have been making any of the flower buds uh, yet. If anything, they're just getting ready to start. So I think you're gonna be okay, you know, with, with pruning your forsythia. Um, I'd like to know, which tropical plants you have at the moment? Oh, Hetty! Oh my gosh, Hetty! Hi! It's nice that you're here, um, Hetty. What I'll do is um, I'll I'll um, I'll 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 give you a call to let you know what we have, okay? Uh, and then Trisha, I put Flower Girl. Oh, Flower Girl, everybody is the Doctor Earth. That's the other name of the Bud and Bloom booster from uh, from Doctor Earth. And you put it on a still be wonderful. And some of the leaves have turned brown. Is this from the fertilizer? Uh uh. It's not from the fertilizer. It's from lack of water and the heat. And the heat. That was a good question. A good question, Trisha. Okay. And then over here um, from Usha, uh, three inches in my gaze. Are you on TV these days? <laughs> well, that has nothing to do with Garden Coach, but yes, I am. 
uh, I've been working with uh, Tracy Butler, and then the producer has been uh, uh, each each Wednesday. Tracy and I um, uh, record a ten minute segment for her Facebook page. So it's Tracy Butler at ABC um, Seven and on Facebook, and and then and then the producer has liked the information we've been doing. And so I've been on the eleven a.m. news three different times this, you know, all through the summer months and very, you know, very timely. And that day, it was the hottest day of the year. They had me talking about watering and things like that. So keep watching, keep watching. Thanks so much. Okay, we'll get back to the notes, okay? And, but I'll keep taking a break to see what the questions are. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so now, this is what you need to be watching out for in your gardens. Okay, now I have some cool samples here. The Japanese beetles are wreaking havoc. I mean, absolutely wreaking havoc out there. So I wanted to show you, I thought I had these organized. Hold on just a minute. Um, and, and I've got, I mean, I, I just got really fun things, you guys. Hold on, hold on. All right, and so then the Japanese beetles are right here. Okay. Um, we, there's, it, it's so much fun at, at, at the information. It, uh, we used to call it the information desk. I still slip back and call it the information desk. And oh my gosh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, the Japanese beetles were in here. This makes me nervous. Someone opened the bag. Oh no, the Japanese beetles escaped. This is terrible. Oh my gosh. Well, I guess I don't get to show you the Japanese beetles. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. That's terrible. Oh, I apologize. All right, so I want to show you this because this is something everyone should really be aware of. All right, this is what's going on with the boxwood. All right, now uh, this is this was last year's damage, and see the see the the leaves that are um, they have spots and right there. See there the see the holes in them right here. That's that's the exit hole of the. Um, the boxwood leaf miner. Now, what's really scary is is when you look at the back side of the brand new growth. Can you see this right here? Don't you know this is like having a microscope right here? Okay, see all the little flecks, the yellow flecks on these leaves right here and on the backs of the leaves right there? That shows that the eggs were laid on this plant and those eggs hatched and the little tiny larva burrowed in and they're feeding on this plant. And they're, they'll, they'll be eating all the mesophyll cells out from the two epidermal layers all through the summer and all through um, next spring. And then it starts it, it, and the damage will occur again. The customer caught this just in time. We caught this just in time. See, see those leaves right there? See those little white dots or those little yellow dots on them? That's a sign that that's been enough. That, oh, look at those. The, those are all the larva feeding on the insides of those leaves. So you want to treat this with the systemic insecticide. It's the bio-advanced tree and shrub insecticide where you mix it base three ounces per foot of plant height, pour that right down through the center of the plant, and then it stays in the plant for 12 months, killing those insects. So if you have boxwood, you really need to, you really need to watch for that and take care of that. Now, this is another fun one. Um, I'll take it out of the bag because there's no insect. Um, this this is a cherry, and it's a cherry, a cherry leaf, and you can see all those little holes, and that's that's a that's a disease called shot hole fungus. And when you look at this one right there, see that hole right there that has a little brown section in the center still? That means it hasn't dropped out. Usually, all of those holes have those centers. And it's a fungus that inoculates the, the leaf in uh, the end of April, early May, and then these brown spots um, show up and then they dry up and drop out. And so it looks like someone has shot this leaf with buckshot. And if you're not from the, the, a farming community or you don't know what buckshot is, um, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, a sports gun that you know, it, it has a bunch of little pellets and, and, and it makes a lot of little holes. And that's, they call it buckshot. So this is called buckshot fungus. And so what you need to do is spray the, the leaves when they're first 
uh, opening up in the spring, like when, April 15th, you use Immunox is my favorite. It's the systemic fungicide that you spray on, um, on the leaves. It's absorbed in the leaf and stays in the leaves for 14 days, two whole weeks, even if it rains. So it's a wonderful preventative you know, for those diseases. Since we're talking about that, I want to show you and kind of remind you about the um, about the um, uh, oh my gosh, they didn't get out. They were just hiding. So once I messed with them, they came out. Okay, so there are the Japanese beetles. Can you see them through the? Okay, can you see them through the? And see what they do to the leaves. They turn them into lace. Here, it's there. I'm going to give you the right name. They're they're kind of shiny green. Oh look, I'm making him move. Okay, shiny green and kind of a metallic color. And then, and then they just eat all of the leaves and everything except for the veins. And so that's why they're such a horrendous insect. Oh, that was his underneath side. Okay, now see, okay, hold on. He's trying to drop. They drop whenever, okay, there he is. Can you see him really well? So it's kind of a green metallic look. Oh, I'm so glad they didn't escape. Whoa. Okay, but I'm sealing this bag up now. I, they must have just been hiding. Uh, isn't that good news? Okay, all right, all right, here we go. Japanese beetles. All right, now going back to the fungal problem, um, the, um, uh, the, I'm gonna show you this one. Oh, this was, this was also Japanese beetle damage. It was a different sample. Oh, gosh, I'm, I'm acting like the absent-minded professor right now or the, the, the crazy scientist. Sorry about that. Okay, so, oh, all right, this is a Japanese maple that I wanna show you what will happen if you don't if you don't water it appropriately okay so this look see how see how the edges all just turn brown so this was this plant was going getting dry in between waterings we were having the really hot 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 temperature and um it's not it didn't kill the plant but you can see how it really damaged the look of the plant um the the center part of those leaves were still photosynthesizing and it's still doing okay. But if you see any tips like that, that's the indicator that you really need, you really need to, you need to water it more frequently and you know, don't go as, or, or more amount. You need to give it more water, you know, and enough water at all. Um, this is the nine bark and um, this has the fungal problem and the eryophyid mite. And this is a new sample. This is a new sample, it's really gross. I'm sorry to show you this, but See this, that, that's the powdery mildew forming all over it. And then, you know, and then, and, oh, that's icky. It dropped on my computer. And then, then the erified mites are in the centers of the leaves and they actually encourage the powdery mildew to, to form. So you want to use the systemic fungicide and a systemic insecticide on this one, and a miticide. And that's that, that's that bio-advanced three-in-one. It's a great product. It comes in a hose and sprayer, but it also comes in a ready-to-use spray bottle. And you spray it on, spray at dusk, and then and then you don't kill any pollinators, and it stays in the plant for 30 days. Okay, let's keep going here. Um, oh, this we're seeing a lot of this on hostas, and look, this was this is this is drought damage. Okay, see how the tips look? That's drought damage, and also sunburn on the on the variegated part of the plant just can't hold up in the heat and the sun. And these were, these were you know, improperly placed so that they're really, they were really showing a lot of damage. And then, and then, then this, is the, this is rabbits. Rabbits do this damage. They're just taking bites you know, off of it. And then, and then lots and lots of slug damage, lots and lots of slug damage on all the hostas out there. The, the, the heat and the humidity is perfect for slugs. And then the other problem is because of the heat and humidity, all of the eggs that got laid have all hatched. So that's when you see all these little pinholes on the hostel leaves. So you know you really need to get that slug bait out and do that every two weeks for the rest of the summer to really reduce your populations. Okay, these are other, I, I just wanted to show you these. These are samples of cherries that had shot hole fungus, but also that aren't being watered enough. So and you're, we're seeing a lot of the trees um, just dropping, dropping leaves. And these are leaves that are usually more in the center of the plant. And when there's not enough water, the plant just sets up the excision layer, they turn yellow, and then, and then they drop off. So if you're seeing the early fall color, 
on plants and or those yellowing leaves, that's usually a sign that they're, they're not being watered enough. You know, not being watered enough. Okay. Um, oh, here's, here's the sample of the, um, the hosta with the pinhole, the pinholes. And um, this, this is it right here. Look, see those little itty bitty holes that are on there? And you can, you can really see them when you look at the underneath side. Those, those are little baby hostas that are feeding on the leaf and then crawling back down to the, um, to the ground level overnight. You know, so so be, be, be really, really a, a aware of that. Okay, this is another loaded bag that I have. Um, okay, and then right here. Oh, this was the Boston Ivy. Again, I'm just, and people just keep bringing these leaves in and it's, and, and again, this is anthracnose. And that's, those are the, those are the dots that you see, the brown spots that you see, you know, on the leaves. This was a really bad sample, but, but okay. So that's anthracnose. And again, one of the good things about the heat is that it has stopped any of the sporulation that could be happening if we were having, you know, cooler temperatures and the high humidity, but because it's so hot, it just stopped all that sporulation cold. So there's not going to be any secondary reinfection, which is one of that. It's kind of a good, a good thing that's happening. Okay. Let's keep going here. Um, all right. There's now, apple scab is on crab apples. It's on and, um, edible apples. It's on um, service berry. It's on, um, uh, I, I, I'm amazed at where I'm seeing and, and, and we're also seeing black spot on roses and then um, uh, rust is everywhere. Rust happened and I'm not getting the rust samples out because they, they're, they're dropping so much spore. You touch it, you get this orange powder all over your hands, all over your shirt. It's terrible. So the rust is actually that's the spore that's going back to um, to attack the um, an, an attack to, to inoculate the, the eastern red junipers. Or it's, it's called eastern red cedars. Okay, so oh, I know I mentioned this last week that that I was worried about seeing the first uh, viburnum leaf beetle adults emerge. Man, it's been nonstop all week long, and so be sure you're treating. Um, your, your viburnums. And if you haven't treated them with a the systemic, be on the lookout for the adults and use a spray so you're killing those adults before they get a chance to lay eggs on the new tips of the, you know, of the branches. Um, I'm, I was horrified when, when I've been seeing so many samples of those coming, you know, coming, coming out. Um, oh, I just noticed that someone said, can you show the bottle for the boxwoods again? And I'm so sorry, I don't, have, I don't have a sample of it to show you because we've sold out of it, everybody. But the good news is, as I was walking across the parking lot to come to the administration, administrative building where we, I'm in the conference room doing this presentation, I saw a huge shipment from um, the Bonide Company. So the Bonide Company and the, um, the Bio Advanced Company I think we've got stock back in. And so the bottle to use for the boxwood, if you're just dealing with the insect, is the Bonide 12-month um, tree and shrub insecticide or the BioAdvance 12-month tree and shrub insecticide. We also have a wonderful product. It's the BioAdvanced, and it's the all-in-one rose and flower care. And it is, um, it has a, a fertilizer, a systemic fungicide, and a systemic in insecticide. And you can use that on shrubs based on the height of the shrub. It's one ounce per foot of plant height in a quart of water for each ounce. So usually boxwoods, you were asking, boxwoods are four feet tall. So it's gonna be four ounces in four quarts is a gallon. And then you're gonna pour that right through the center of the shrub and where the, where the trunk goes in the ground. So thank you for asking that. That was that was uh, great. Okay, what is the foam weed killer? Is it a liquid or a tool which makes foam? Oh, you're so cute. Okay, the, when we're talking about the foam, the foam applicator for a weed killer, Usha, this is another great question. Uh, I'm going to show you that real quick, and and it, it's it's a setting, it's a setting on the spray bottle, 
So this is in the off position where it says off. And then when you turn, you twist it this way and it has foam. And then you, if you twist it the other way, that's off again, twist it this way right here, then that says foam. Okay, so so that's usually on all of the all of the spray the, the ready to use spray bottles that you know that that we that we sell in here, and and I think you're talking about the Roundup the Roundup one because that's you want to foam it if you don't want the collateral spray going around and hitting you know hitting hitting other things. Okay, so good question. Let's get back and I'm watching the time. It's it's one thirty. Okay, now um, okay. All right, again, watch, I'm gonna keep repeating this. Watch all your trees and shrubs because we're getting, I'm getting so many samples. We are getting so many samples at the Plant Information Center of plants that are showing signs of early fall color. So especially service berries, you're seeing that burnt apricot, the lower, the leaves that are lower on, in the canopy, they're because of the water stress, and the heat, they're showing that sign. That's the, that's the number one sign that the plants aren't being watered frequently enough and or they're not being given enough water at each watering time. So when, if, if, if you all are using sprinkler systems, then be warned about that, that um, actually put um, rain gauges or just pans, you know, just pans. I, I have a cat. So I have empty cat food cans that I can set out right at the base of a plant. And then when the sprinkler runs, then uh, after, after it goes off, and my sprinklers are set to run 30 minutes each time, I always go out and check to see how much water is actually getting to the, the soil point where the plant, it, it, the, the, the roots are going into the ground or the, the trunk is going in the ground. So check that on your system to make sure you're getting the right amount of water delivered right to the root zone where it's needed. Don't rely on uh, watering the leaves of the plant with the sprinkler system. The plant won't be able to take it in at all if, if it's just the leaves that are getting wet. So, so be sure and check and see, and you might have to either increase the, the frequency, the, the number of times you use your sprinkler system, or definitely increase the amount of time each zone runs so that you're getting that water right to the roots. And if that's not happening and you can't adjust it, a lot of people are frightened to death of sprinkler systems and trying to program them. And you know the sprinkler install guy did it and you don't wanna mess with it. So if that's the case, then hand water the plants. Go out and make a special effort to go out to carry a bucket, carrying a water can and water it just to really help those plants. Okay, so now let's get to the, the what to do, more what to do. Okay, now focus right now is the best time to focus on perennial maintenance, you know, and perennial maintenance in the garden. And that's what my topic for um, the, uh, the webinar, the learning uh, center, the virtual learning center webinar tomorrow is perennial maintenance. And, um, but, but now's the time to focus on that. And that includes pulling the weeds. You know, and it, the best thing to do is just get in and hand weed, hand weed, you know, the, uh, the, the weeds, a lot of them. I, I, have, a, I have a perennial bed in, the, in my backyard. I was focusing on my front yard all to get it cleaned up. And I've done a really good job of that. I finally got to the backyard, was horrified about all the weeds that were back there. And so I made a good chunk of, 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 of work on it on this nice weekend on Sunday and, and Monday and was able to get a lot of the weeds out of my daylilies and oh my God, they just look wonderful. You know, so, you know, once you get that competition out from your plants, they really, they really look better. So focus on getting the weeds out, um, you know, again, watering, make sure you're giving it the watering. And then again, adding that continuous color by looking to see where you need to add and then coming into chalet and find gorgeous plants. We have some beautiful plants that have come down from the farm and come in from our other, our other growers that we work with. And they're just, oh, they're absolutely gorgeous. And they, they, you know, especially lots of echinacea out there that look beautiful. So come in and get, get you know, get, you know, and, 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 and fill it up each month by adding, adding that and, 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 and watch. Now, again, spread sluggo, spread sluggo. I'm going to keep repeating that. Get the sluggo down. That's the, that's the earth-friendly natural slug bait that has iron phosphate in it as the active ingredient 
and the slugs eat the pellets and it kills their appetite and it stops the damage immediately and, and, and it gets rid of those populations. Okay, um, you wanna really be conscious and aware of all the insects that are feeding on the plants out there and you know, protect the ones that you need to protect, um, roses, uh, anything in the rose family, really get those protected. The systemic insecticides are great and use those at dusk so you're not killing any pollinators because poll bees are back at their hives and the butterflies are hiding in, you know, in, in, in the trees and shrubs. And, um, but make sure and get those, get those protected. Okay, um, if you're using that all-in-one rose and flower care, usually it's April 15th, June 1st, and July 15th. This is the 16th, so your, your time to, you know, to do that application you know, again. Um, let me see. Okay, it's 20 minutes until two. Um, I'm going to talk about some good things that this heat and this, you know, that this hot, hot summer has done. This hot, the, 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 you know, the wonderful heat has just been incredible for tomatoes, tomato production. Uh, I was going to say, let's see a show of hands of people that are, that are looking and, and, and seeing great tomatoes kind of coming into your horizon real soon. Um, I love that because it makes me think about um, eating and uh, bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches. And I would love to see what people, um, there was always the question about whether, it's, see, I grew up eating those down south. I grew up down south. So I grew up eating it on white bread. And sometimes we would toast the bread. So that's a question. Do you toast your bread on your bacon and, and tomato and lettuce sandwiches? And which condiment do you use? Do you use Miracle Whip or do you use mayonnaise? Okay, I'm a Miracle Whip girl. That's all we ever ate down south was Miracle Whip, and so so there's that there could be big arguments over you know over that. So I'm I'm hoping I see a whole bunch of a whole bunch of answers on you know coming up on the on the chat screen here about whether you you know and and a lot of people you know just won't even eat bacon. But I, I got to confess you know I grew up down south and I grew up on a farm, so you know so we, we visited the farm all the time so. So there's just nothing like a great bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. So, so oh, there's a vote right there. I love it. I love it. Miracle Whip. Yay, Miracle Whip. Cool. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That, that was excellent. Okay, so now um, um, the other thing I, I want to talk about is, is, is lawns. And um, people are seeing lots of weeds in their lawns. Crabgrass is everywhere now. It's been warm enough that crabgrass is, and where most people are seeing is all along driveways, all along sidewalks, where the cell was really, very really warm. And, and, and it's an area where when we, when we did get rain, back when we used to get rain, all the seeds would wash to the edges of the lawn and then that's, that's where the crabgrass would, would, would sprout. So, so you wanna get out there with the crabgrass killer. And, um, and then, and then the crabgrass killer is is not as as not as problematic as trying to kill the herbaceous weeds in the lawns right now. You if you can hold off two more weeks, you know, two more weeks, um, that's going to put you right at the first of August when um, the days are going to be getting shorter and shorter and shorter, and um, and 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 you're not going to have as many plants. Once our days start getting shorter, the the actively growing herbaceous plants and our landscape plants, they're going to start slowing down. So they're not going to be actively growing as much. So any of the herbicides that are in the, the volatile herbicides, like in the chickweed clover and oxalis, this is the, the best weed killer that we have to really get rid of the weeds. It even has creeping Charlie on the label. Uh, it will take care of wild violets um, in any of the Veronica's, you know, and, and, and then the bad guys, the chickweeds, the clover and, and the oxalis. Um, but there's, there's chemicals in here that are amines. And if you use them right now, when the temperatures can go over 85 within the next 30 days, and that's gonna happen, these chemicals volatilize and they float up into the air and drift into the, 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 the metabolizing plants. And they can cause, and I had a great sample here, they can cause all this twisting and gnarling of the, um, of, 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 of the, the leaves. And it's usually the 2,4-D derivatives that do that. It doesn't kill the plant, but it really makes them look awful. And what it does, it's a plant hormone. 
That's why you can spray a weed killer on a lawn and not kill the grass plants and kill the herbaceous weeds. And so, but what I'm advising is hold off until that second week of, of August. So that's really actually four weeks from now. Hold off until the 15th of August. That's the perfect time to, to fertilize, do, you know, do your fertilizer a little bit early. Um, and, and our lawns are really gonna need it because of all the watering that we're having to do. But use the fertilizer and then come in the week later and spray all the weeds. You'll be revving up the metabolism of the weeds. Then when you spray this herbicide on it, which are plant hormones, it will, the, the plant will pull those hormones in faster and it'll kill the weeds faster. So, so hold off, you know, realize that you're just gonna be waiting a month unless you have a big party or something, but with COVID, you can't have a big party. So, so hold off on, you know, on spraying, you know, those weeds and then, you know, and then take care of it at the end of the summer when you can really make progress and, you know, and, and, and kill all those weeds. If you have more than 30% of uh, weeds in the lawn then consider using the, the bonide weed and feed and it's labeled for use in the spring or the fall. And so that, you know, that's when you use that. And, 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 and again, if you have more than 30% of weeds, then that's what, that's what warrants using a weed and feed. Otherwise, we just want you to fertilize and spot, spot spray the food, a few weeds that you have you know, in, you know, in your lawn. Um, okay, now let me think, what else, what else? That I wanna make sure it's quarter till. Uh, I'm not seeing any other questions uh, on the screen. And, um, and oh, here's an, another a sample I just got, I just got, and I wanted to show you this. And this, this is a river birch. And, and what, can you see? Can you see all the lumps and bumps on those top leaves? That's, that's a gall mite. And gall mites are little, little insects that overwinter under the bud scales. And then when the new leaves are coming out, they crawl out on the leaves and the adults lay the eggs on the leaf and those eggs hatch and those little, little larvae chew their way in and they're living inside the gall. And then they, they, they go through their whole life cycle and then they come out and then crawl back under the bud scales and overwinter the next, the next winter. Now, what's odd is the University of Illinois and all the, the, the horticulturists at the different horticulture schools don't recommend any control for that. It's not, it's not anything that damages the plant. If the plant's right at your front door and you look at it every time you go in and out, there, are, there is a wonderful um, systemic um, miticide that you can spray on early in the spring as the leaves are just coming out and then that will prevent that, you know, that will prevent that. But, but most of them just think it looks gross and they, they bring in and say, is it dying, is it dying? But um, it's not going to hurt you at all. So, so well, this is my menagerie today. It's almost like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, you know, where I get to show you all, you know, all my all my show and tell items about what we get to see and what we're what we're doing, you know, out in the in the nursery. Um, be sure be sure and come and look at 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 plants that are looking good, not just disease. Um, some of the stars out in our nursery are the hydrangeas. They are just looking spectacular. And even in containers, you know, they're just really show offs and, and, and the paniculatas are just becoming, they're, get, they're going into their prime right now. And um, so those, those, are, those are the ones to, you know, to, to work with. So be sure and come and look at all of our perennials, uh, you know, the, the, the hydrangeas. We still have a, a lot of gorgeous, trees and shrubs that you can plant. Um, the only thing you have to be really conscientious about is the watering, you know, keep them really well watered, you know, so they get, a, they get, a, they get established really well. Uh, remember to use the transplant solution, Root and Grow. Root and Grow is wonderful. We just got, we, we got that back. So we've got the 32 ounce, we've got the gallon size and we have the 16 ounce. And you wanna mix that at um, two ounces in a gallon and then pour it right where the trunk goes into the ground. And, uh, and I love it because that little solution tells the plant, plant, I want you to use all that phosphorus, it's 10% phosphorus to make roots and the plants actually do it. So it's a great way to get a, a good, good start you know, on anything that you've newly planted. Trees, shrubs, roses, perennials, tomatoes, you know, any, anything you're just getting started. It's wonderful to you know to, to use that. 
So I'm looking to see if we've got any more, any more questions. And it looks like I still have 20 people. So um, I thank you all and uh, watch, you know, watch for us. Uh, we'll, we'll do it again next week, next Thursday. Uh, we're not, uh, Tracy Butler is off next week. So I'm not gonna be doing uh, a segment for her Facebook page next week. We're taking kind of a break. And, um, and I should know what the lecture is. I, I should know what next week's lecture is. I apologize, I don't know. This one tomorrow at 10 is on uh, maintenance of perennial gardens. So I hope to see you then. And, uh, and I'm gonna tell everyone, thank you so much. And it's just almost 10 minutes till. I'll keep on a little bit longer. I'll, I'll, I'll keep this open a little bit longer to see if there's um, any, more, um, any more questions. Hetty, if, if you are still on, um, we've got beautiful Hawaiian um, um, tea plants out there. We've got gorgeous palms. We have sago palms. Uh, we have beautiful um, um, different varieties of hibiscus. And um, we've got, I think, I mean, I, when I look at all of the tropical plants out of the window of the, the diagnostic desk or the, the plant information center. And so I'm just kind of looking through my head Lots of crotons, beautiful crotons. Um, um, let me see. Um, okay. Oh, bird of paradise. Uh, there's some bananas. Um, so I hope, Hetty, that you're still on um, and you, it's safe to come and look and because it's there's lots of really good social distancing out, you know, out out there in 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 our sales yard, our nursery yard. So I'll still call you to make sure you you you, you heard that in case you signed up. And then here's another, I'm getting email info for Tony's talk. Oh, thank you. Um, after his talk is over, I'm, I'm getting next day. What can I do to get email earlier? Oh, I'm sorry, Usha. You're getting the notification the day after? Huh, I'll check that. I'll check that for you. Okay, and then what was the last item's name again from Sherry? The last items. The last item, the the chickweed clover and oxalis weed killer. I'm hoping that was it. If you're still on, oh, for the roots. Thanks, Sherry. Okay, it's called Root and Grow, and it's from the Bonide Company, and it comes in at a 16 ounce bottle, a 32 ounce bottle, and a gallon size. That's 128 ounces, and you use you use two ounces per gallon each time you're treating the plant. And it's called Root and Grow from Bonide, B-O-N-I-D-E. It's one of the best products that they have. Great, okay, oh good. And Marion also, Marion also said Root and Grow. Oh, you guys are good, you guys are really good. This is really fun. Okay, so now we're at 10 minutes too. And I think I'm gonna say thank you. And uh, I'll see you, uh, I'll see you, I hope I see you tomorrow morning and at the webinar. And uh, thanks for all your thank yous. Y you all are the best. Appreciate it. Okay, take care. Be safe and, 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 and wear your face mask. Do you like how I have it color coded, the light blue that goes with my uniform? <laughs> so wear your face mask. It's really important. Okay. All right. Thank you. Love you all. Bye-bye.